why are so many people choosing to buy the Panasonic Lumix S52 and S52X right now so long after its release? Camera roll in and action. If you are somebody who entered the giveaway to win that 100 watt Zhiyun tube light, make sure you stay to the end of this video and you can find out if you have won. Right, it is a brand new month and we are into October. October. We are going to start off this month with a Lumix event in London. Also, I'm going to get some pickup shots for the documentary I've been working on over the last four or five months. First thing you'll notice here is I have two adapters. This one is a PL to E mount, and this one here is the same thing, but an L mount. My lens choice constantly changing, just like the camera. I'll sometimes have a longer lens in here. For this trip, I'm going to take the 16 to 35 Panasonic S uh, lens. I love this thing, it's one of my favorite lenses. Here, this one is a bit of a unique lens. This is a Sure anamorphic lens. Look how small this thing is. It's just so cool to say you can get anamorphic glass. The only cine lens is my Nisa Afina 35 millimeter. I was going to take a 25 and an 85 in these two spots here, but I just chose to keep it more compact. The mic of choice is the Deita v mic d4 this thing is super popular you've seen them all over the internet up here we get into power this first one is just the small rig battery i never shut up about this thing it's absolutely incredible the outputs this allows me to not take my macbook pro charger and charges my phone and can power any camera this thing just does everything and i forgot to mention on the FX3 itself, we've got the Sigma R 24-70. On the end there, we've got the Nisa True Color ND system. This is my go-to ND. And just here, inside of the cap, is a Promise filter. The last things are my MX mouse for when I'm doing editing on trains, the classic Sony noise cancelling. And this thing I never leave without, it's my card reader and also holds my cards and keeps them nice and safe. Before I forget, I do actually carry a tripod as well. The weight of this thing for what it's capable of. Got a little holder here to put an air tag in. Problem with a lot of travel tripods is they're built for photography. This one is built for video and has a little ball head for leveling out your shots. Bag of choice is the Manfrotto Pro Light Backpack. Been using this thing for a month or two now and it's easily the best backpack I've ever used. It's also quite affordable. Something else worth mentioning is this thing does come with a built-in padlock, which is pretty neat for keeping your stuff nice and safe. So I just landed in London. If anyone does not know, I've been filming a dock. It's so close to being done. Can't wait to kind of dive into all that. But I've come just before the event tonight. I'm gonna get some pickup shots. So I'm just heading to a music studio of a friend. We're currently filming on the Osmo Pocket 3. How does it look? Hopefully it looks pretty good and I can just use this to capture more footage more conveniently. Less friction equals more consistency. So I use FX3 with Sigma Art 24 to 7 air, just kind of run and gun, no lighting, nothing like that. And the shots actually came out pretty excellent. They were just pickup shots like B-roll for the documentary. So super happy there. On to that Lumix event. I was so hoping this was going to be a new flagship camera, like an S1 Mark II or an S1H Mark II. But unfortunately it was just the launch of a new update for the S9 and a new kit lens. It was amazing though, meeting all the other YouTubers and content creators, anyone who guessed whose hand that is in the background there in the comments below i'll give you access to my s52 course and the clue is in you will be an s52 user i'm doing around nine days of shooting in 14 days in total and that could have actually been more which takes me on to an amazing piece of advice that i like to give everybody who's like freelance or self-employed i got offered three days to cover the weekend coming up it's really tempting the money was half decent everybody wants more money and when we are self-employed we always feel like financial scooter is slipping away from us you feel a bit like that anxiety feeling and insecure but just saying no is the freedom that you are enabled for not being in employment so use it you know just don't worry there's plenty more jobs out there it's about 6 a.m now it's winter so it's still dark outside which always makes it harder to be motivated the first job i'm doing today is around two hour drive and i have a new lens for this that are just coming yesterday. So that makes it a little bit exciting. Let's take a look. So this is the setup I'm going for today. So one camera shoot, I'm running this on shoulder and tripod. This is the new lens, it's a Sigma Art, the new full frame mirrorless version that was released this year. It ended up being a four or five hour shoot just of Jack Catchell, the boxer, doing a media workout for us to film and get images of him. The client did 
end up using just vertical content, so no 16 by 9. But to say it was just no lighting, the kind of ugly lighting in the gym, I think the Brano did a really good job here and just shows how versatile the camera actually is. Obviously, in the past, I've made a lot of content around the Panasonic Lumix S52 and S52X and all Lumix cameras in general. A large part of my audience are Lumix users, and me myself, I'm a massive Lumix user. I have noticed recently a massive spike in comments, engagement, just inbox messages and questions of people picking up an S52 or S52X right now. And this got me thinking, why are so many people choosing to buy so long after its release? The first reason I believe comes down to simpler Lumix not needing to hold features back. The way the market plays out from like Canon and Sony releasing the FX3 and making us wait so long to get that shutter angle. And I think it's out of fear of cannibalizing the FX6. And then the same thing happens in the FX6 with the FX9. The same thing will happen in the FX9 too because of the Burano. And the same thing happens in the Burano because of the Venice 2. They are so scared of taking sales from their more expensive items, they have to limit features on purpose. But Lumix did give us that open gate, did give us that shutter angle. And that takes me nicely on to the second reason I believe people are buying it right now. And it's simply price versus capability. It's price versus what it is capable of. That 10-bit 422 in vlog, shutter angle, focus peaking. You can go open gate, amazing IBIS, amazing AF. It's such a great time to be a video creator. If you can pick up for like $1,300, $1,400 an S5 II, get yourself a good lens on it. What you can go and create for under $2,000 with a lens and a camera body and a memory card is just unheard of until this point right now. So the third and final reason, as you can see, we're out here in the National Peak District. So this is full frame, 6K, open gate. This is made possible from the Lumix and Sure making this super small satin lens. It's a 35 millimeter T 2.9. It is anamorphic of 1.6 X. But again, it's a full frame anamorphic lens. Look how small this thing is. Um, but let me show you what this thing can actually do. So I actually believe that this whole filming in open gate and cropping landscape art, that is the bit I believe is overrated. I found before some negatives of filming a boxing ring on the ground, there was like tube lights on the ceiling. I exposed for the tube lights, well, then the edit went to 16 by nine and those tube lights was never even in the frame. Meaning that I underexposed the boxing ring where the actual boxers was warming up. And it's like, if I had not shot open gate, I'd have realized that they would have never been in frame. Pretty new ones, but it actually is a negative when you're out there using open gate for like a maybe reason. But when it comes to open gate mixed with these new affordable anamorphic lenses, like the satin lens from Suray, that is where it really matters. And that is why most people with a Lumix wanting to capture open gate should definitely pick themselves up some kind of affordable small anamorphic lens. I'd help you, but I'm gonna film it in case it falls. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You got it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, one floor up. One floor up. So day one on a two day shoot for our department store, capturing all their in-house furniture, home deco style stuff. We're shooting in the department store itself, building these mini sets, which made the lighting a little bit difficult. We had to like bounce off roofs, clamp lights really high up, clear that ground space to capture the shots. I am actually mid review on some Synco headsets, which claim to be like the Hollyland ones, but cheap with more features. And they're delivering so far video on that soon. The brief from the client was to make the footage feel high end, but also cozy and warm and I think we pretty much nailed it showing off the textures of the levers with reflections from the lights and just faking lamp light etc this is 70 to 200 which 70 to 200 is normally struggle with focus breathing but look how controlled this is on the Sigma one above what we're on now two so it was on to the second setup and it was more of the same bouncing light off the roof just creating ambient light or just from high up where the light would fall in people's homes. We had the FX3 set up as a B cam on the Mavi Pro. 
and it was more detail shots. There was a massive focus on the detail as when you are aiming for high-end customers, it's all about attention to detail, I guess. We had to light for the wides and then kind of punch in afterwards. But here you see we're imitating that lamp onto the sofa, creating a kind of war warm, duller look. It's not exactly high key. It more feels like it's cozy. <laughs> on to the next job we have ben here master grip extraordinaire uh, this job was uh, the first christmas theme job of the year which always feels weird when you're like in october but there was not too much christmas theme going on it was a house party vibe kind of a get together social thing first shot was the actors arriving at the house party and we imitated a ring doorbell with a fish eye lens <laughs> so I'm gonna walk up to here. Sharp as hell. I'm rolling and action. Three, two, one. On camera here, we've got Jesse B. Go DP, one of the best at it. This thing here, I've got a review coming on soon. That's amazing. Final shots of the day was to head outside and get what will be the first shots of the video but we were just waiting for the sun to be in a better place. We only used one light for this setup. It was a 6 to X set to 3200 Kelvin. I can't show too much of the footage here because I'll get in trouble but here's a little sneak peek. So on to the second day at the department store. This one was focusing more on the services, so like the delivery service, how they come and build it and bring it into your home nice and carefully. So there's gonna be actually moving subjects in this lighting. Made it a little bit trickier, just avoiding shadows off the walls, etc. Walk in and drop it down, or is it okay to start where it is? I think it's okay, because you're gonna use the wide. Yep. And if you look there on the front of the brown note is the brand new 85 millimeter from Suri. Full frame, shot this shot right here, uh, AF, custom button, aperture ring, you name it, it has it. I'm so excited to get to know this lens a little bit more, but yeah. On to the final shots of the entire project, and it was like a top-down shot. We did use a C-stand, which is a bit risky. Don't do that. But it was only an FX3 with a light lens. We kind of imitated sunlight with that Fresnel lens there. And for me, this is like the perfect example of camera doesn't matter. This is about composition and lighting, what makes it look so good. New project here, and this is a super cool place. It's kind of like a 90s nostalgic football activity or soccer, depending on where you're from, using garage doors as nets to score in, etc. For us, it was super fast paced, working with kids and sports, moving really fast. We used the lantern just to keep it super fast as we're lighting big spaces and we didn't want any like ugly shadows and we just didn't know what to expect. So far, it has only been edited into vertical content. 16 by 9 is coming soon. It's super miserable. We're up before the sun's up. It's raining and it's 6 30 on a Saturday morning. Morale's low. We've got to keep going. We're off to a music video. Load up, three hour drive. So we arrived at the location in London after that long drive. Time was against us, so we just had to set up as quick as possible. It was just like bang everything on stands and lights and get it all set up and then just attack the shot list. First one was in this bedroom shot here where the artist was a silhouette and the model in the background. So we're using the window and also some fill light from inside. Then I had to adjust the height of the model here using the ramps out of the van. You know, you just do whatever you can to make the shot work. Onto the FX3 for some small tight shots in the car and back onto the Brano. Uh, we was using a mix with Nisia Fina and the Lauer Ranger. They both mix really well and both look really cinematic on the Brano. Overall, this music video went extremely well. The location was beautiful. And as a filmmaker, you tend to find yourself in these amazing, beautiful houses that you will probably never afford. Right, so I've loaded up the website. This website apparently lets you put in a URL and then picks a comment at random. Remember that person does have to be following me as well as commenting. Those were the rules to keep things nice and fair. 
We have 326 comments. We're going to pick one person as winner. Find the winner. And, oh, wow. James Killian. Um, he's pretty low to me. He's Manchester. So I'll contact him and let him know he's won. He definitely follows me. So I already know that. His work's amazing. So pretty cool to see it go to someone who's already doing pretty amazing stuff. But yeah, I'll drop him an Instagram DM. And if you're watching James, I'm sure you'll been in contact with me before you see this but yeah well done if you want to catch up on any of the previous months of the vlogs use this link right here